All right. Today I'm working on a 1973 Mustang convertible. This vehicle has a 302 two barrel engine that is totally stock. It has about 21,000 original models because it was stored in a barn for over 40 years. I have made a few changes to it, for instance, aluminum radiator, electric dual electric cooling fans, and we have a relay being used for the headlights so that anytime the car is running, the headlights and the parking lights are on. But today's effort is going to be to show some of the fuel evaporative system. The fuel evaporative system came into play, I think, in 1971. I don't think 70. But 71, 72, 73 are largely unchanged with the Mustangs, the first generation big nose Mustangs. And what we have at the air cleaner is we have an inlet for a foil and paper tube that leads down to a fuel evaporative canister. The canister has charcoal inside. The charcoal is used to hold fuel vapor fumes. We also have at the top of the canister a vent cap. It is open to the atmosphere. Gasoline fumes are heavier than air. So when this gets loaded up with fuel vapor and the engine is running and there's a little bit of negative pressure or suction, very little from the air filter housing into here, it lowers the pressure inside the canister and causes the fuel to be released or evaporated away from the charcoal canister um, granules, fresher coming in, replacing it. Now the way that the fuel vapors get in here is through this hose. Now this hose acts like it is going down to the intake manifold, but it's not. It actually is going to a metal vapor line leading way back to the fuel tank itself atop and there is a vapor liquid separator that is attached or embedded in the tank inserted onto the tank more correctly and as the fuel vapors build up under pressure when the tank is warming up the vapors are forced through this hose into the charcoal canister. And the canister itself is located right at the rear portion of the support cross member on the engine. Very simple. See if I can get some more pictures on here to get more detail for you. And it looks like it's simply held on to the shock tower through some bolts. I think we'll see. like it to me but anyway I hope that video helps anybody who wants to know where the canister is supposed to be attached and how and I have some other pictures and videos that I took earlier of the fuel vapor system showing how the fuel vapor line runs back to the fuel tank and where it's attached so I will be posting that with a link in the comments on this video as well.